far right is Future World West. You can go through that passageway or that tunnel. Just to the left of that, you see a Starbucks. And continuing around the fountain is Club Cool. We're going to go to Club Cool. That is the Coca-Cola shop where you can have samplings of sodas from across the world. One of my favorite places. And we're going to go through there. Then we'll work our way back around and we'll come down that center uh, hallway or entrance corridor so you can see what's there. Don't let anyone con you. Stay away from the Beverly. It's really bitter. And it's kind of the joke that you play on your friends. Try the Beverly and everyone tastes it and they get a disgusted look on their face. Cheers. That's good. And there are Coca-Cola gifts of all kinds. And as we exit, it takes us into Future World West. But we're going to go back around to the front and go through that corridor so you can see other ways that you might enter into Future World West. So as we enter this corridor, you can see there are character spots, Journey into Imagination, the land, and the living seas. This is really a good place for character meet and greets because you can see Mickey and friends, you can see Joy and Sadness, and you can even see Hero 6, what was his name, Baymax. All of that can be seen right here. And as we exit, the seas are to the left. The land is straight ahead, you can see that. And Journey into Imagination is just peeking up over the top there. But we're not quite done with this building. Because remember when we came out of Club Cool? Had we turned to the right, we would have gone into another section of that building. So let's take a look at that first before we look at these other three major attractions. And by the way, you'll find some restrooms right here as you exit that character meet and greet spot and moving past those restrooms since it is food and wine they have some exhibits here and what we're going to look at now is kind of um, rotating exhibits and attractions that change seasonally this is flavors of fire it's one of the food and wine festival featured food locations next to that is the light lab and this is what you could have entered into as you exited Club Cool. We would have gone in over that entrance, but it would be the same section of the building. And this is one of those areas that change occasionally, so you'll find different things. And let's go into the light lab, where we can get drinks that glimmer and glow. They really do, they're fluorescent drinks. Let's go inside and have one. As you enter, there's a pretty neat timeline of Epcot it's a little more than we're going to be able to stop and read right now. And you can learn a little bit about the science of light. And that's what I'm trying. Thank you very much. Cheers. There's also those little, what do they call them? Boba beads or bubbles, or I don't know. I'll have to go look on the sign, but they kind of burst. They're, um, they're kind of, they, they have a texture of like plastic, but you can consume them and they burst. Pretty cool. You can see those beads. They kind of taste like uh, lifesavers or gummy bears. It's that type of flavor. A lot of flavor. You'll probably pop one at a time. So that is the light lab. 
This is a door we would have entered if we would have came into this as we left Club Cool. So there's the exit to Club Cool right here. This time I'm going to turn to the right and we're going to look at everything that's in this open area. During the, um, the Flower and Garden Festival, this is where they have the Butterfly House and that is really a cool thing to see. But right now it's food and wine, so you can get all kinds of different types of food. Cole still eats. Oh and look, there's Remy. Over in this direction they have what they call Active Eats. And this is Earth Eats. This is where they have the Impossible Burger. It's a vegetarian burger that is supposed to taste just like a hamburger. I tried it yesterday and it's not bad. There's your flavor of fire that we were at. There's a light lab. And since we are close to Journey into Imagination, that's the direction we're going to go. It's a really fun ride. It's a, a relaxing ride. And then as you come out, there is a Disney and Pixar film festival. And it's a little theater where you can go in there and sit down and watch some short films. Here are the Journey to Imagination fountains. This is a really fun attraction. It rarely has a long standby line, 10, 15 minutes. If you can pay attention when in the queue, they have a lot of inside jokes. For example, there was just a page for Dexter, uh, Dexter Riley saying that he left his tennis shoes in the computer lab, preferring, of course, to the Kurt Russell film, The Computer War Tennis Shoes. And here you can hear Dr. Channing's secretary go crazy with all the phone calls. Hello, on your tour, you'll see how the five human senses can help capture your imagination. Figment? I thought I told you not to interfere. But you've got it wrong, Doc. Next stop, Imagination. For every sound, your ears are hearing. A thousand thoughts can start appearing. This one is set free. Let's go. Just turn your imagination loose and anything can happen. to the ride, we enter the What If Land. And there's just a lot of really cool interactive activities here. This one's very cool because you put your hand in this little window pane and it controls where Figment goes. See, I'm looking at the Figment on the left. That's the one I'm controlling with my hand. Just a lot of really neat interactive activities. So as we come out and go up the stairs to our right, you come up to the Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival. If you've never done it and you have an extra 15 or 20 minutes, it's really well worth it. They have some excellent short films here. And since I am a Disney Visa card holder, I can get a special meet and greet at this photo spot. I got my photo spot photo and usually it was Minnie and Pluto. Usually it's either Minnie and Pluto or Mickey and Goofy. So it's one mouse and one dog. Oh, I do want to show you there's sort of a hidden restroom behind Journey into Imagination. And I'm not sure a lot of people know about it, so it's kind of back here in the corner at the end of everything. But I'll show you where that is. So as we pass by Journey to the Imagination, just to the right, and you come around the corner, and that's where you can find a restroom area. And it's an area that's usually quiet and not too congested. Now we're going to head to the land in that direction. Now as we go to the land, they have all kinds of food choices. So many places to eat there. I'm not going to eat there today because it is Food and Wine Festival. And I kind of made a commitment to myself that anything I ate when I'm in the park today, 
is going to be one of the things that I can't get otherwise. And a lot of the offerings at the land, I can get any other time. So here's a future world west corridor that we originally came through. And had we kept going straight, we would have been at the land. But here on the ground, this is really interesting because what happens, it tells you many of the famous inventions as they go through time. And as you get closer to the center, it gets further and further back. And if you remember how easy it was to learn your ABCs, thank the Phoenicians. They invented it. Come listen to the land we all love. I don't think they use that song anymore. Anyone remember that? The land song, come listen to the land. One of the first things we're going to do is look down over the edge where you can see everything that's going on. There's seating for all the restaurants. We'll move to the other side and see the restaurants from above here. There's Soren. We're probably not going to get in Soren. Generally, if you don't have a fast pass, it's a really, really long wait. Fun ride though. And as we pan over to this side, there is living with the land. And living with the land is really cool. It's a really relaxing boat ride that takes you through gardens and different innovations that have been done with farming. And here's the Garden Grill restaurant. This is character dining. You can see Mickey Mouse in his bib overalls. Mickey the farmer, there he is. And across the way, you can see the many different counter service restaurants. A lot of choices here. And as you can see, an awful lot of seating. So the lower level is primarily the counter service restaurants and the seating area, but it's also the entrance to Soren and Living with the Land. And we're going to ride Living with the Land. This is usually a really short line. It's only a 10 minute wait right now. The surface of the land roots trap water from the flowing mud, extracting precious nutrients and minerals. The plants and animals that have learned to survive in these harsh conditions make use of what little water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun. This food for a growing world led to an enormous use and sometimes overuse of land in our sand. To help us maintain these carefully controlled ecosystems and for your safety, please remain seated in your boat at all times. Welcome to our living laboratory where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. Fish farming, or aquaculture, accounts for nearly half of all the seafood consumed globally. So our small fish farm produces nearly 5,000 pounds of fish each year to serve in restaurants around Walt Disney World. Wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. We can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. Some of our best ideas have been inspired by nature like these fruit and vegetable trees. We serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses and restaurants here at the land every year. The standby is only 25 minutes for Soren. If you're not familiar with it, Soren is a ride where you're actually elevated off the ground, you're in seats and your feet are dangling and you are moved into a curved screen theater. So it seems like you are actually moving in to all the scenes as you sail or float or soar throughout different famous landscapes throughout the world.
Some people find it a little disconcerting. I find it very pleasant and relaxing. I never get tired of Soren. A couple of reasons. Number one, it is a great attraction. But the other, I just don't do it a lot. Because it's usually a long, long wait. And it requires a fast pass. We're just waiting in line a long time. When I saw 25 minutes, and I don't think I waited 25 minutes, I had to do it. All right, let's head over to the Living Seas, or what I think is just called now, the Seas. Yeah. 10 minutes for Nemo. Let's do it. I really like this queue, how you start on the beach and slowly go under the sea. Thanks a lot to air is human. Here's a lifeguard shack. But as soon as we pass that, we start to descend. And you can see that the handrails get rusty. And we're underwater. We're underneath the pylons. with Crush. I understand that's an interactive theater show. I have never been to it. So beyond that I can't comment. And here we have Bruce's sub house. It's kind of a playground for kids. That's really a good photo op here. Ooh, spooky. <laughs> Look how frightened he is back there. Just a playground for kids. What happens if you look through this? What do we see? But it really will take a lot of fun if you're a kid or if you're a family that has kids. And as much fun as this is, Disney does manage to sneak in a little bit of education. And they give you a lot of really interesting tidbits and pieces of information and trivia about undersea life. And they talk about coral reefs, giant clams, and the neon goby. Of course, they have to have this display, right? It's Nemo. Years ago they had a really cool system where it was an elevator and it was supposed to be like you were descending down below the ocean and it wiggled. You could see bubbles coming up. It was really cool. I'm kind of sorry that they got rid of it. As always, we exit through the gift shop. Oh, yeah. 
Just off to the right of the entrance to the seas, there is the Coral Reef Restaurant. I don't know much about it. I've never eaten there. It's tucked way back here. If you didn't want to intentionally go here, you'd probably never know it was even there. So here's the menu. Entrees are in the $30 range. And over here, you see they have a kid's menu. So they have things like clam chowder, lobster bisque. Do little kids like clam chowder and lobster bisque? Okay. Grilled fish, grilled chicken, sloppy joes. For the adults, we have lobster macaroni and cheese, top sirloin steak, shrimp and grits. Oh, this is nice. The dining room has a view of the underwater aquarium. I like the looks of it. I think I'm going to go back there and have my dinner there today. And there is a really nice art gallery here. So let's go take a look at that. And here's the art of Disney. We'll go in and take a quick look. There's an artist meet and greet right now, David Doss, who did a lot of the artwork as we walked in, is chatting and visiting. And I talked to him for a few minutes. I didn't put him on camera. I thought it might be, um, you know, kind of encroaching on his, uh, his time here. But I did chat with him. Interesting, interesting artist. These pieces are all David's, who's here right now. This whole wall here is his. This is really neat. $395, I could see that hanging on my wall. There's a nostalgic one, the Dream Finder. It's called One Little Spark. This is kind of the figment wall. Not totally, but a lot of it. And we have a lot of the sculptures over here. Oh, I like this. It has all the old tickets, the A, B, C, D, and E tickets. $160, not too bad. I really like that. And there's one of Duck Williams. Don Ducky Williams. Probably my favorite Disney fine artist is uh, Ducky Williams. I met him uh, a year or two as well. Interesting man. And most of the advertising art that you see on tickets and posters, if it has characters in it, was probably done by Ducky. Really great stuff. When it, it's really clean artwork, you know, character artwork. And there's a Hatbox Ghost. Interestingly enough, there's a lot of Hatbox Ghost art around here, but we do not have the Hatbox Ghost at the Orlando Haunted Mansion. It's only in California. So I went back and I talked to David a little more. What an interesting guy. I probably just had a 20 minute conversation with him about his artwork and about his motivation and working with Disney. There's a good sample of his work. He said he will never sell that original. That he really likes it. Just one of those things that you can do when you come to a place like Epcot, you, you have to learn to expect the unexpected. I never could have planned for that. I guess I could have could have seen what artists were showing up, but I didn't plan for it. And as a result, I had one of those just real special moments this afternoon. So that's it. We've seen about everything in Future World. It only took us about six hours, and I did not dawdle. Now, I think we did just about every single ride. Let's see, we, we did Mission Space. We did um, Test Track over on that side. We got to West. We did Journey into Imagination, we did Nemo, we did Living Sea, or, um, excuse me, the, um, the Land, we did Soren. We did a lot of stuff today. Six hours. I even got to visit with an artist. So I hope you enjoyed it. As always, I encourage you to leave your comments down below. Please share and like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and consider becoming a Patreon sponsor. $3 sponsors do get personalized postcards from me and the various places that I visit throughout North America, U.S. and Canada. Thanks again. I'm Mark with the Average Me Channel.